Um, yeah, so I was artist in residence a couple of years ago here at the British Library. And um, uh, usually uh, artists in residences at these kinds of uh, institutions are on the basis of being given access to some particular um, part of the collection or archive um, which they then use as the basis of building some new work. Um, my artist in residency was a little bit different because I was given access to the British Library's operational systems, um, the digital infrastructure of the British Library, like the catalogues, the databases, the electronic requesting systems, the means by which the library is run as a big information processing uh, organization. And my question was how to use um, this, um, uh, the, the library for some different purpose. Uh, what you could use the library's um, digital infrastructure for, apart from uh, the reason that it was designed for, for finding and retrieving out items. Could you use that big, complex um, uh, information system for some other cultural purpose? some other interesting um, cultural purpose such as uh, making art. So when I arrived at the British Library, um, one of the first things that struck me was in common with other national libraries, you can't see the collection. There's no direct public access to the collection. It's all like in the basement or up in Boston Spa or somewhere like that. So. <clears throat> But at the same time, um, there is, right in the centre of the British Library, a huge iconic monument, which is the King's Library Tower, which, as you might know, is the uh, part of the British Library's collection which must always be on public display, on permanent public display, uh, despite the fact that public display no longer actually means uh, public access, as it might have done in the early 19th century. So in some ways, the King's Library Tower is like a memorial to an earlier period of history where the level of public access to the collection was different. So I wanted to see if there was some way that I could, um, something I could do uh, with that idea. Um, the, uh, the point being that direct access to the collection may allow forms of browsing um, which allow people to randomly come across items in the collection which they might not otherwise have known about rather than searching for things that they already know uh, that are there and they just type in you know, the uh, uh, title or something like that something a bit more open-ended uh, in its use of the library. So uh, at the same time, um, this is an image from 1851, by the way, which seems to suggest um, that there was a time when the public could just randomly stroll around um, the uh, collection as though they were out on a, on a, on a Sunday afternoon picnic. 1851 was the year of the Great Exhibition, so I'm not quite sure how accurately that shows us uh, an image of previous levels of public access, but it's quite a nice image nonetheless. At the same time, I came across um, an image of this guy who is Thomas Watts. And Thomas Watts is um, <coughs> a guy who was instrumental in designing a lot of the earlier um, processing systems in the British Library, um, which uh, to allow for the enormous growth in the British Library's collection, particularly in the 1840s onwards. And he, one of these uh, systems was a new shelf marking in the storage system called the Elastic System, as well as other innovations which we would now uh, recognize as being principles of uh, modern information systems and databases. Uh, that that uh, information system tells me that I need to hurry up. So what I did was um, I went down to the basements and spent a couple of days photographing 
4,300 books and use them to create uh, this image. Now, I wondered if you can still see um, an image here in this mosaic. Can you see an Im uh, some, some image? Okay, so it's, it's the image of Thomas Watts that, I, that we saw earlier, all made up out of those thousands of books. And if we zoom in, we can see that we can use this interface as uh, a form of visual browsing. I can go through this shelf, and it is a high enough resolution for me to see what the individual items are and the shelf marks and everything. And in fact, I can actually go in a level further to a level beyond that that's really strictly necessary to identify the items, where we go into a level of sort of more intense visual data, <coughs> which for me extends uh, what's initial um, um, in insights into a further dimension. Um, now, as, as well as that, you may notice that there are some gaps in this mosaic. And if we look up here, we can see some particularly large gaps. And the reason for that is that you can actually, if you click on one of these items, um, get more information. All these items are tagged, and they are also linked to the British Library catalog. So you can actually go through the Explore catalog, and you can log in and order one of these uh, 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 items. And if you do request one of those items, then it is removed from the virtual bookshelf <laughs> and it reveals a second image lying underneath. And this image is a composite image of 30 members of the basement staff that work downstairs to retrieve those items. And so the system is designed for <coughs> to, as the users um, request books, it reveals a hidden part of the modern requesting system, despite the high level of digitization and reliance on databases, the human element is still an essential part of the overall infrastructure, although it is now a, a part which is literally underground and hidden for, from us. So the elastic system reveals a part which is still as important as it was in Watt's time. <coughs> 